Welcome to the Real Estate Espresso Podcast, your morning shot of what's new in the world of real estate investing. I'm your host, Victor Menashe. We're reading headlines about layoffs that have started across corporate America. Twitter made headlines this week, but then anything involving Elon is making headlines these days. Even Facebook parent Meta is expected to lay off thousands after hiring nearly 42,000 employees since the start of the pandemic. Free cash flow at the company has fallen 98% in recent months. Now, this is not limited to the U.S., of course. It's happening globally. If the economy is so strong as we're led to believe, then why are these layoffs happening? Is it going to get worse? And if so, why would it get worse? Is it falling revenues? Well, the answer is yes, partly, but that's not the entire story. On today's show, I'm going to show you a leading indicator that can help you anticipate layoffs. The evidence is plainly and publicly available for anyone to see if you choose to look. There are literally thousands of proof points, but we're only going to look at a couple to establish the connection. The headlines are all about the Fed. What is the Fed doing? What does the Fed balance sheet look like? Are they printing money or are they allowing bonds on the balance sheet to run off without being renewed? We hear about the central bank's outlook for interest rate policy. Now, many analysts believe that the stock market, governments, and even the population at large are fixated on what the Fed is going to do next. With the U.S. dollar as the world's reserve currency, many other central banks are implicitly being forced to copy the Fed playbook. What's not making headlines are commercial bank balance sheets. These balance sheets are actually sitting on a much higher risk profile than we can readily see. Credit is the engine of business, and almost nothing happens in business today without some form of credit being involved. Inventory purchases are made with lines of credit. Construction of new manufacturing capacity in order to reshore manufacturing to protect against global geopolitical risk, that also requires credit. With the near doubling of interest rates, the cost of that debt service will be crushing for business. Lines of credit are a variable rate. Large capital projects are often funded by bond offerings, but bond offerings in a rising interest rate environment are difficult to underwrite and even more difficult to fund in the current environment. If interest rates being paid by businesses have gone up by 4% since this time last year, you can easily calculate the cost of existing debt to business. Let's imagine a small manufacturing company located somewhere in middle America is sitting on $100 million in debt. And let's imagine they manufacture aluminum eavesdrop. The cost of servicing that debt has just gone up. How much did that debt service go up? Well, it turns out they have an additional $4 million in debt service, and they need to find that $4 million somewhere. They can take it out of profit, or they could find a way to increase sales, or they could cut expenses. The fastest way to cut expenses is to reduce staff. If the cost of carrying an employee is, say, $60,000 a year on average, they would need to eliminate 67 positions in order to cut expenses by that $4 million. So you can easily calculate they would need to eliminate two people for every $3 million in debt that they're carrying on the books. Now, we're not talking about all debt. We're talking about the revolving credit. Let's assume that none of the bonds come due during the economic cycle, which is clearly an optimistic view. So it's really just the variable rate debt that needs to be keeping pace with rising interest rates. Now, in our example... We're talking about a company that manufactures aluminum eavesdropping. We are clearly entering an economic slowdown in new home construction. Sales are likely to fall. The company is facing the double jeopardy of rising interest rates and at the same time experiencing falling sales. But then they get a phone call from the bank who are a little concerned about the business outlook. The bank's credit manager says they're going to reduce the company's credit line in order to reduce their exposure to what is perceived as a higher risk. In addition, the bank is going to attach a risk premium to the remaining credit line. So now the company is scrambling to reduce inventory and has to sell product at a discount in order to reduce their debt load. That reduces the amount of free cash the company has available to conduct operations. Now, since debt is driving the business, they have to either shrink the business or they have to borrow at higher costs. And this is when you start to see businesses cut off an arm to save the patient. Let's look at two automotive manufacturers, Ford Motor Company and General Motors. It's been reported that they're making lots of money these days. Lots of big trucks are being sold during the pandemic. Let's be clear, both companies have been trying to reduce their debt load over the last couple of years. For example, Ford has reduced their total debt by $5 billion since 2019 to where they're currently carrying $49.6 billion in debt. 
their annual interest cost is about $7.1 billion. That's from their income statement. If that number is accurate, that's an average interest rate of 14.3%, which quite frankly is extremely high in my mind. I'm actually surprised to see it that high. The picture of General Motors is quite a bit different. They're spending $946 million in interest payments on their income statement with $33.7 billion in current debt on their balance sheet. That's about a 2.8% cost of capital. GM has also reduced their debt by about $4 billion over the last couple of years. Both companies have significant exposure to interest rates. Both companies have union contracts expiring in September of 23, and you can bet with inflation running this year near 10% for the last couple of years, those union negotiations are going to be about worker pay increases and job security. With General Motors and Ford, their loaded labor rate, which includes all expenses, is around $115,000 per employee. Even a 1% increase in debt service at Ford or GM is equivalent to the salaries of 4,300 employees at Ford and 2,900 employees at GM. Ford has already announced a workforce reduction of 8,000 employees to fund their transition to electric vehicles. See, the point of today's discussion is that you can easily see how higher interest rates will translate into layoffs. Examining a company's balance sheet can tell you at least on a qualitative basis whether that company has higher or lower risk of laying off employees as a result of higher interest rates. The Wall Street Journal this week forecasts that it will take about $200 billion in additional interest expense to service the debt at American corporations. That's a big number. If that debt service is funded through layoffs, you can expect about 2.8 million people to be laid off in this economic cycle just to service the higher cost of debt. If there's a reduction in income, that debt will need to be serviced and you can expect even larger layoffs. I believe as real estate investors, we have to pay close attention to what's happening in the macroeconomic conditions. As you think about that, have an awesome rest of your day. Go make some great things happen. We'll talk to you again tomorrow.